junior lightweight title. It, it's got a uh, ring announcer, Duncan Pollock. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It is the Community Hall in Orlando, Soweto, South Africa. It's a Sunday afternoon and it is Tnaba Boxing Promotions that bring you the 8th Annual Celebration of Madiba as a Boxer. With the compliments of the Gauteng Provincial Government and Supersport, your world of champions. The next bout is the second of three title fights and it is for the vacant South African Junior Lightweight title and as such scheduled for 12 rounds. Please welcome into the ring the first of our two fighters. He is Asanda Ginti. Asanda Ginti from Mdansani, just outside of East London in the Eastern Cape. Ranked uh, second in the uh, featherweight division in South Africa. Moves up to junior lightweight here. Nicknamed Dynamite. Again, Zijata is his uh, trainer. Just the one loss, lost the South African featherweight title to Jeff Makagane in September 2022. And one against him is he's sort of in March of this year at the Orient Theatre. By way of technical knockout, seven rounds under the schedule. He set him back up for this uh, title fight in the junior lightweight division. Introducing the second of our two challenges, he is Sifiso Flungwani. Important. Important. Find it's interesting, 15 bouts so far, 61 rounds of boxing, he's won 9, 5 by way of knockout. He's lost 4, he's got 2 draws, but he's won his last 3 fights by way of a knockout. Before that though, he had a double loss, that was in 2020 and 2019, but his most recent record is a good one for the man in your picture, Klungwani. He's known as the Gold. He's never fought in a title fight before, while his opponent is under Ginkley, he certainly has. As Ginkley won the South African featherweight title in 2021 over Abdulaziz Kunert at the Poitons Boxing Club, and then uh, defended it twice before losing it to Jeff Magagane in September of last year. Ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of championship boxing on the way for the vacant South African Junior Lightweight Championship. Our three judges at ringside, Yap, Fadiven Hazen, Mfundo Mbandaba and Sifriel Indaba. Our fight supervisor from Boxing South Africa is Mr. Klux Ramakhole. And the third man in the ring when that opening bell goes, our fight referee is Tabo Spampo. Introducing the first of the two fighters to you, he boxes out of the red corner on my left. He weighed in at 58.9 kilograms. As a professional, 10 wins with just a single loss. Seven of those wins coming within the distance. He boxes in the black trunks with a silver trim. He hails from Ndansani in the Eastern Cape. Ladies and gentlemen, the former South African featherweight champion, please welcome to Houghton Soweto, Asanda Dynamite. Out of the blue corner on my right at 58.9 kilograms as well. As a professional, nine wins with four losses and two draws. Five of his nine wins coming within the distance. He boxes in the gold trunks with white trim. He hails from Malamulele in Limpopo, fighting out of Ramberg, Gauteng. Ladies and gentlemen, your homeboy, Sifiso, the gold Nicknames the gold, he'll wear trunks of the same colour. A lot of support for Sifiso Plungwani. The gold time. If you cut yourself the gold time, we should put large hands. Sure. Thomas Van Poel is the third man in the ring. The Dinkley moving up from featherweight to junior lightweight, where Brian Mitchell is uh, no stranger in his yeah. 21 bouts. <laughs> As a What's champion, both South African and on the world stage. Underway then for the start of round one of a schedule. 12 rounds here in Soweto. Both fighters fighting out of the orthodox stance. It's Ginkui in the back, from Guani in the gold. And uh, this should be, as all title fights should be, an interesting fight. South African title fights are always crackers. Local is always lacquer. And the interesting thing, Kevin, will get my name out the way. 40 years ago, 
This is my title. I beat Chris Will 1.40 years ago, so I'm, I'm proud to say I had this title. But yeah, good to see these guys in my division. And up for the Vikings, a significant junior lightweight title. Asunder, Dynamite, Kinkwe against Sakiso, the gold from Wani. Now, Brian, I saw him out of and he started 40 years ago, but it, it, it hasn't ended yet. I mean, you know, you've done the seven championship defenses, 14 world championship defenses, Hall of Fame. You've got your own gym, you're commentating here on your world of champions. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin Evans. Checkers in the post. The two fighters very wary of each other here. At the start. Yeah, he's got a yeah, good reach advantage, but he's not using it yet. Pink is uh, closing the gap. It's interesting that uh, despite his record having only won nine out of 15 bouts, and have lost four. His last loss was on points in 2020 against Lucky and Yabani in clip sprints. Lost on points over six rounds. But since then, he's had three knockout victories. One of them at Poisons, one of them at Ramaklodi Sports Complex, and one of them at the uh, casino in Polokwani. So he might be on the return path to glory here, Sifiso Kulokwani. Certainly would be massive, massive success if he won this thing. Yeah, absolutely. Kevin Barrett has been done in boxing before. Stranger things have happened. But so far, I think Gingwe is looking the better of the two. Closing that gap. Finding his range nice. He's nice and smooth. Nice little work on the inside then for the big man, Kulokwani. We spoke about in the previous about the WPO Global Bantamweight title find that was won by Landili Angneke when he moved up to from junior to full bantamweight. Yes. And uh, Kinkley moving up from uh, featherweight to junior lightweight. Well, you know, if you're a good fighter, Kevin, you, you can go through, I mean, we can mention all the superstars like a Manny Pacquiao went through eight different weight divisions. I mean, that's insane. They've got Manny Pacquiao from the Philippines. Dingon Tabela won World Towers at Lightweight, won World Towers at Super Middleweight, legendary Dingon Tabela. It can be done. It's, it gets sure. more difficult when you're fighting bigger guys, but uh, you can certainly win titles in different weight divisions. The great Sugar Ray Leonard won World Titles in six different weight divisions. Uh, Sadie Freud may win in a few, so yeah, it definitely can be done. The great Evander Holyfield was one of the greatest cruiserweights of all time and then won the world heavyweight title. Doesn't get much bigger than that. And became a brilliant heavyweight as well. Absolutely. Keep this corner. It's Yata once again. He's been a busy man today as uh, Miyake is Yata. And uh, lots of encouragement to the fighter from the Eastern Cape. for the first round of the South African Junior Lightweight title fight here between Asanda Kinkri and Sofiso Klongwane as the two fighters pound off their seats in the corners for the start of uh, round two for schedule 12 here in Soweto. Both looking lively, both looking focused as well they should. The short left hand and not quite sure if he released that uh, left chair did uh, Klongwane. Well, you got the dynamite and you got the gold. Who wants it most? Who wants this vacant significant title? It's a big thing to be the champion of your country. Yeah, it's a big honor to fight for a domestic title. It's even a bigger one to fight for a world title. And uh, Sifiso Klongwani, in his uh, 16th bout of his career, will, will fight for the first time for a title. Kim Kree has already fought three times for the featherweight title. But uh, he won, he defended it on two occasions and then lost it against Jeff Magagani. So he is uh, an accomplished fighter. He's used to fighting at this sort of level. How much of a difference does that make? It makes, it makes a big difference, given to fight at this level. But if you're used to having fought in uh, title fights before, I mean, he won the featherweight title in 2021, defended it twice, lost it, so he said four fights. In As, just, uh, you know, in, in, in title fights. Yeah, he's he's at championship fights. He knows what, what it's like to be in championship fights. And uh, it makes a difference going up in, in weight. Obviously, it's a whole new division. But King has been there, like you, you say, he's, he's been a champion oh. before. He can be a champion again. 
What I'm looking forward to, if it does go longer than uh, maybe in the third, even the fourth round, is the conditioning of these two fighters. Sofiso Kuangwadi hasn't gone more than uh, three rounds in his last three fights, it's all six rounders. If you look at the Sander Kimpli, his last uh, four fights have been title fights, so 12 rounders, except for the one against Kasim Tanke. And uh, he's gone just about the distance in every one of them, so the conditions surely must be better before King Kimpli's preparation has been correct. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously bringing all the experience to the party, and you can see it going round two. Well, what's happening here is that he's got already Kuangwani back in the way. Yeah, what Kuangwani has got to do, he's got to use his reach, he's got to use that range, Kevin, which he's not doing. He's allowing the shorter man to dictate. And that's what the, that's what the shorter man has got to do, he's got to bully you. And so far he's doing the job, he's doing good. Ginty slips a few punches and gets onto the inside with a left hook that's blocked. Nice defense early on here from Kulongwani so far. All it takes is one punch in this uh, sport of boxing. You've said many times, Brian, it's not a game. <laughs> you don't play boxing, good enough. You don't play boxing. <laughs> I've heard, you, I've heard you people say when you fight. Don't play soccer. Yeah, you definitely don't play boxing. This is the real deal. Another good one for, for Ginty. How do you see that round, Kevin Evans? Yeah, no, I thought he was dominant. I thought he pushed uh, Klonkwani onto the back foot. I don't think Klonkwani had anything to offer as far as any meaningful punches were concerned. I thought that was a, a, certainly a 10-9. That's a nice right hand. Although he was off balance a little bit, Ginty. But for me, 10-9 to uh, Ginty. Don't forget, up next, Jesse Espin Espinas against Brunello Chapalala for the vacant WBO Intercontinental Junior Flyweight Division scheduled for 10 rounds. Yeah, the big little man. And Brunello Chapalala, I've seen him fight many times. South African champion, he can fight. So don't go away. He faces Jesse Espinas up next. What a great afternoon of boxing it's been, Kevin Evans. It's nice to see the local flavor, nice to see the international boxes here as well. The next two fights will have Filipino boxes. But yeah, it's all local as lacquer as the start of round three of the scheduled 12 for the South African Junior Lightweight Championship. Ginkley in the black and white, Klongwani in the gold. Started to use his range a little bit better, Klongwani. I'm liking the jab here early in round three. The jab's getting better from Klongwani. But he's got to step forward, Kevin, you see, he's stepping backwards, he's, he's counter-punching too much and there's no power in those punches. He needs to step forward with a jab, step forward with a right hand, but that is better, definitely better from the goal. So he's up. But as uh, Kinti came forward looking to land punches, he was just caught on the inside with a little flurry from Tungwani. Those are sneaky little punches, you know, and uh, they can't hurt you, especially if you're coming in, it just adds to the impetus and the weight behind those punches from a Klongwani. And Ginkli has to watch out for that. Being a smaller man, of course, he wants to get inside the range. Oh, that's a piece of Still piece of Klongwani. So plenty of respect being shown here by the two fighters. One minute that has passed in round three of the schedule 12. The problem is when you're fighting on the back foot, you've got to land, because otherwise the guy coming forward is the guy that looks like he's winning the fight. Or is winning the fight for that matter. So if you're fighting counter-punching on the back foot, you've got to try and land, which he did nicely there. Yeah, nice little straight left, another jab this time, but he has to uh, get his protection going as uh, Kinkley comes on to the offensive. Nice body punch from Kinkley. The dynamite in the gold in action for the vacant South African junior lightweight title. It's almost back in a way more and more the longer the fight continues. We're only in round three of the schedule 12 here. Klonkwani is still throwing some nice punches, but how much momentum do you lose with a punch going forward while you're stepping backwards? Well, you, you see, it it's also depends on, on the judges. Do the judges like the guy on the back foot, the boxer, or do they like the comfort fighter throwing the most punches? Me personally, I like the guy coming forward throwing the punches. Nice little right hand over the top there from Ginkri. Goes to the body this time with the left hand. Very watchful indeed from Klongwani. Nice little left hand. Ginkri there as well. He's got to mix it up. 
Sofiso has got to mix it up when they get on the inside. He's got a brilliant jab in the outside, but when Ginkler gets inside, he's got to mix it up with him. Now waiting for him to just to get under that reach, and maybe he's waiting for the middle of the fight no, 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 to no, no, be able no, no, to throw no, no, no. a flurry of punches uh, the way you used, used to do in your championship fights, but punches in punches, but uh, so oh. far we've seen singular fights. That's a little bit better from Ginkley on the bell. That is yeah. round number three. And he's, he's, yeah, he's walking him down, man, which, is, which, is, which is nice. I thought it was enough for Klumpwani for me to uh, make that an even round. And uh, so far I have just uh, the one point lead then in round number two for Asanda Ginkley. It's, it's an interesting fight. You've got to buy it back in a way as Chata goes to work getting his uh, finds a little bit of Vaseline to slip punches. But uh, he looks fairly relaxed as Asanta Ginkley. Three rounds down of this vacant South African junior lightweight title fight. 58,96 is the top of the division. These two guys, I must say, Kevin, you said it earlier on that the big guy, especially Pinker, who was a featherweight. And then you look at uh, his opponent, he's a big man oh, fighting oh, in the junior lightweight it. division, Sakiso Swamuani. What? Bells down for the start of round number four. And all of a sudden, Kompani decides he's going to fight as a southpaw. Yeah, he's uh, changing it up. Maybe it'll work for him. He's got to try something. I'll tell you what, he's opening himself up for a big right hand straight down the middle uh, from Ginky. But at the same time, he can land a left just like he did there. Yeah, unless you're really good at switch, switch hitting, don't switch. It's going to be interesting to see how this all works out there. And uh, for Sofiso Kompani, Oh, that's a, a top and a miss from Asanda Kingfi. Kompani fortunate to get his uh, lengthy body out of the way of that one. Box is separated by Tabo Spampu. Must say it's a good fight, really entertaining. Patrons have come in their numbers into the community hall. We see lots of them in here. He's using the jab nicely as well, Kompani, and he's... Although he's not backing away, he's not backing away as much as you saw in uh, round number three. Now uh, he's jabbing well. So he's, uh, he's gone back to orthodox. As uh, Glongwani. Ah, Punching behind the head. Referee's not cool, don't come at that. No, no, no. Well, don't about it. Really apologize. Yes. He says, none of that. No hitting behind there, that's illegal. Obviously, anywhere behind the front of your body is illegal. Anywhere below the belt and behind the face and the front of your body is illegal. Just for the moment, you've been back to South Paul. Now he's unorthodox again. He's still wide. I'm not sure how much Ginky is going to be confused by that. He shouldn't be. Rebel, rebel, rebel. So the one is kind of punching very well on the outside. Close rounds, yeah. Very close indeed. I think Longwani is doing rather well here. Last time he went more than three rounds was in Spain, 2020, with a loss against Lucky Monier Bane. Since then, he's only managed to get through seven rounds, and uh, he's won the three fights, by the way, of uh, knockouts. So, yes, Kulbani got the legs today. How's the conditioning been? He last fought just a couple of months ago on the 23rd of June, so that's only two months ago. Ginkley's getting caught coming up forward here, and it's a very good fight plan from Sofiso Kulwani. Sometimes the right hand of Ginkley's a little bit on the wide side. Yeah, he's fighting a smart fight, Kulwani. He's drawing his man in, and then he's landing those combinations. But Ginkley is the man that's throwing punches. Not landing with him, though. Got to land. Throwing punches is one thing, but you've got to be landing. Good round for Kulwani, I felt. Ginkley with Definitely. lots to think about in the red corner. Dawn Bench in the background. And Kloni Maboko, who's the trainer. Nico Ndakula and Chris Sheru are the assistant trainers here for Sofiso Kulwani. And uh, after the opening couple of rounds, he's an improving fighter. Yeah, he's improved a lot, Kevin Lyon. Like you said when you broke down his record, now he's fighting a former South African champion who's brilliant and he's fighting a good fight. 
Genesis Labronza versus Kumalela Kafu. The main fight, vacant IBF International title fight, scheduled for 10. So don't go away. That will be our next fight of the afternoon. What a fantastic afternoon at the Lando Community Hall. We've seen it all here today, Kevin. We've seen church services, we've seen karate uh, shows, and we've seen a good afternoon of boxing. Well, we certainly have, and that's likely to continue here with the start of round number five. Out of a schedule 12, junior lightweight title up for grabs, the South African title. Are we going to be able to see Moro Kinki getting on the inside? He's in the chair of Moore. Maybe trying to smother his opponent from closer range. Gets caught with the left hand from Klongwani. And if he's pumped tries to get out of the way. It looks a bit more purposeful here by Kinkley in round five. Yeah, it's, it's really one of those fights. If Kinkley closes the gap enough and does the work, he can win. If Klongwani lands those long punches on the outside and keeps counter punching well like he, he has been, he's winning rounds. I had Flamboyne uh, winning the previous round, and I have this fight yet even on my unofficial scorecard. So I find this fighting now under the orthodox stance, but we've seen Flamboyne switching on the occasion. His hands are very, very low indeed. Flamboyne. Well, he's very, his hands are definitely far too low, Kevin, but you know, some fighters get away with it if you've got that, that reach and height advantage. But you've got to be careful with those hands down. Probably the best combination we see from King Kri in the three rounds. And this is the start of a comeback then from King Kri. Nice work, downstairs and upstairs. He might have missed with that last right hand. Oh, a lot of punches that are falling short of the mark for Asanda. Well, King Kri is throwing the punches, but is he landing? Continues to be right in the face of Sipiso Kuangwani. I think this fight's going to last. Be like you said, Kevin. Is someone going to have the legs to, to dance and, and run like these for 12 rounds? There's really nothing in this fight at the moment. The title is still up for grabs. Yeah, he's never, he's never fought in a title fight before as uh, Sofiso Kuankwani. And therefore, he's never fought 12 rounds before. He's only fought 10 rounds once, and that was in Toyondo against Prince and Globu back in 2018. So, uh, yeah. How big is the conditioning? Oh, nice left hand from Kinkley. That might have been a low blow. Look up, look up, look up. Oh, a good right hand to the body and a left to the head from Kinkwe. Osanda Kinkwe. Dynamite. Dynamite comes in small packages, they say. Kinkley on the offensive. Still walking his opponent down here. And suddenly, Fungwani is keeping a bigger range. He shakes his head to Gwangwadi. That's often a sign that there is more hurt than what there is not. Yeah, that, you know, as a fighter, it's fight to myself. If the guy shakes his head and says, you haven't hurt me, I jump on him. Because, yeah, that's... You know, that, that's you, then you know you've hurt the guy. Yeah, no, without a doubt, eh? End of round number five of the schedule 12. We're not even halfway through the South African Junior Lightweight title fight here in the Soweto. Some of the action then from round number five, which on my unofficial scorecard I gave to a Sunday King Cree. Yeah, I'm going with you, Kevin Evans. Your scoring is good. Thank you, sir. We're going to make you a judge. Nice overhand there. And, uh, I thought that was a low blow, but it was right on the belt after the uh, overhand right from a Sunday King Cree. It was a good round from a Sunday. And now, can he build on that? And how much more? We are going to focus a little bit on the conditioning of Kuanguani because he said he's never fought for 12 rounds. And after his fight in 10 rounds five years ago, he, uh, he's only fought six rounders. So the last five fights for Subito Kulongwani have only been six rounders, Brian. And out of the last three, he's only gone half of that distance. So we question the, the uh, yeah. Yeah, it's conditioning. We, we don't have any reason to question, only based on his fight record. Because he looks in great shape. No, he looks in shape. Time will tell. You know, also the other thing is, Kevin, when you get an opportunity at a big fight, oh, like a South African title or world title, whatever it is, oh, oh, there's a low blow from Ginkra. Oh, when you get a shot at a big title, you lift your game. You, you get a guy who, who, who's a, a bigger fighter, a club fighter can just lift his game. Because there's so much at stake. You want to be the champion. 
Absolutely. Take us through that run. Kulgani had uh, five minutes to recover, no? Yes. He, he didn't need it. No, he didn't need it. So if, if, if it's a bad low blow and it's an accidental low blow, you do get five minutes to recover if you require five minutes. But of course, uh, he's fine, though, uh, Spinelli. That's worth an inside again by Sufiso Kulgani. Kinkri. Struggling to find the range on oh, occasion. Yeah. Good work from Kulgani. When he comes in and he mixes a, a bit, he's a good fighter. It's interesting because he's a taller fighter and one would expect that comment to be saved for Asanda Kingfrey. But he's doing nicely on the inside, Kongwani. And that's a, a nice left right combination from the man from Manamulele. He is. That's what I enjoyed so much in the last fight dude, with Neke. He's a tall guy and he gets inside and he just whoops those uppercuts. And that's, of course, what uh, Kingfrey has got to do. And, of course, the same for Kongwani. He's tall. How many of the punches are actually landing? That's a nice little stiff jab from Klongwani, uh, but Ginkri, more often than not, is not finding the range. They're there again. Swing and a miss. Yeah, this fight's all about range. Who's going to land? And who's not going to land? We see that the judges are looking at both fighters. Excellent combinations there. From Klongwani, Sofiso. Might be backing away, but he's not going away. It's Sofiso Klongwani. Just for that uh, little right hand on the inside. Ginky responds. A lot of support from the Limpopo province. Oh, what's 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 Round number what's six, you're halfway through this fight. Ginky struggling here with the heights. The movement of John Gwani not finding the range, not doing enough, in my opinion. The fight's still very much even. Heading towards the final 20 seconds of round six. And it should be a 12 rounder. I must say, Kevin, you, you, you spot on. This is a tough fight to judge because it, it's one for you and one for me. But the box is doing a good job, the tall man. And the tall guy's getting on the inside. But is he landing enough? He's getting cool. It's kind of a good fight. Oh, oh. Lovely action at the end of the round six. A little punch to the back of Ron Guani as he looks towards the referee. Kalbas Van Poel for some protection. And uh, the referee might have a, a little word to do. But another very interesting round. It's a complete contrast in styles, Brian. Yeah, it's, it, it really is. And, and I often say it in, when I commentate boxing and look at fights, is that it depends what the judges are going to like in this fight. Because you've got to come for a fighter in Ginkwe, and you've got a, an excellent boxer on the outside in Slomwadi. So who do the judges like, bro? We'll know at the end of 12 rounds, should we go 12? Damien Durant. Tony Puzzi and Damien Durant, of course. Damien Durant's done an excellent job as a young man, as a trainer. Of course, he's the son of the late Luzik Durant. This is the warning that what? happened for the punches that were illegal at the end of the previous round when he, when uh, Kongwani was uh, bending over his own ring and he hit him right on the small of his back. The referee didn't warn him immediately. He waited for the round to start and then gave him the warning. I like that from Thomas Pantu. Yeah, that's very professional. I think it is. Genki might have thought he got away with it, but uh, Thomas Pantu has been in this game a long time. Into the second half of the fight we are then. The opening round of the second half of this bout, round 7 of 12. From so one, he's just picking his man off. Those little punches, they're landing those jabs. Yeah, it's an interesting fight to judge this. And as you say, I mean, the, the contrast of your judging style is as interesting as the uh, boxer's style here. Kiki still trying to find his range. And Kongwani has been well schooled in this one. He's fighting very, very cleverly. He is. Kongwani can't fight much better than this because he's, he's kind of punching, he's using his height and reach. But who's landing enough punches for the judges to give him the run? Left to the body from Kinki. Really nothing too much coming from the former featherweight champion of the South Africa. Look at a second belt to uh, his trophy room. Great, great, great. Referee 
gets in between the two fighters. It almost looks as if it's under Keith who's breathing the heavier of the two fighters. He's got such quick punches for a, for a tall man and such a long arm for Sapiso Blondwani. And you know what he really does well, Stolwani, for me, Kevin, is his hands are low, which is, which is dangerous, but he's, his timing is perfect because when he throws punches, he pulls back and he doesn't allow you to hit him back. So he's a good fighter, Stolwani. Nice left hook from Blondwani as he catches Pinsky coming forward. Intriguing stuff indeed between these two. Fighting for the Junior Lightweight Championship of South Africa. And again, Blondwani goes southpaw. Now he reverts back to orthodox. Gets caught in the middle of Fine King Creek. Now Pimpi is concentrating on downstairs for the moment. Nice punches from Pimpi suddenly. And Scott Blondwani trapped in the neutral corner. But he's untroubled with the man from Malibu Lolo. Well, he's coming on strong now in this round. This is Sander Ginko. Ginko again to the body. He's been focusing on the body for the last little while. He's at a ploy. Kompwan, his hands are already low. Oh, does he get him to drop them even further as we get to the end of round seven? On the schedule 12, will be Rinsa Weto. The action is thick and fast. Both boxes missing in that little flurry, a little bit of a low blow maybe again from Asanda Gintri. And he tries to go over the top, he's really struggling to find the mark here is Asanda Gintri. Instructions to Gintri. Ron, how confusing is it in the corner if you've got three guys, three trainers, is talking to you at the same time. Yeah, you know, well, what you should do is your main trainer should be talking only, and that's the guy you should be listening to. But when you sit on your chair, you've got exactly one minute. Listen to one guy. One guy must give you instructions. He mustn't tell you 20 things to do. He must give you one or two things, basic main things to do, and you got to do it. Don't listen to the 10 guys shouting. Box is back in the center of the ring. Round eight of the schedule 12. May I remind you again that the last time that Clonvani went 10 rounds was in 2018. But I tell you what, over the seven rounds we've seen so far from the Malamolela boxer, he's been pretty impressive. Clonvani's so jab is spot on. Boxing a good fight here. I still have it pretty close between the two fighters. It might come down to conditioning, it might come down to the lack of ring time. For Klonkwani over the last while. Overhead, right hand from Asanda Kinki goes for the left hook as well. Spunkle trying to get out of the way of the two protagonists. Nice comeback from Klonkwani, but missing. Now Kinki is fighting a good fight too. He's, he's closing the gap nicely, he's cutting the rim off. Both fighters are fighting a good fight, I've got to say. Nice left hand. Kinki is definitely winning the fight now in this round. He's putting on the pressure, he's landing more punches, I think, Kevin. Yeah, the good uh, left hook upstairs, a right hook to the body, uh, King Kre on that little foray. Just seems to be landing a little better suddenly. He might have taken him seven rounds to do that. We are in round eight and halfway through it as well, of a schedule 12. But when you're on the back foot, blocks from Ronnie, and you're not throwing punches, you're not looking good. And that's what he's doing now. He came back with a nice flurry of punches. He almost seemed to hold back with the uh, right hand on that occasion. Now, how disturbing is that sun when the boxes are over on uh, the right hand side of the screen? Uh, so, when you look at it from home, there's a bit of sunlight there. And uh, does it not matter because you focused on no. your opponent? No, this takes seven, it doesn't matter. You worry about a guy punching you in the face. <laughs> you really don't want to look at the sun, I can promise you. Kinky goes to work on the body of Ronquani. Still got that grimace on his face, pop a smile. And you know, the adrenaline is pumping so much as well, Kevin. And obviously I'm joking about the sun of it, but you know, even if your eyes cut, your eyes closed, the adrenaline is pumping, and you're in a big title fight. You don't care what's happening outside. You just want to win. You just want to fight. This is a bit around for Sander Kimki. He's found the range, and he's repenting from Kwane for really. Kwane's not 
Freddie Vanding. Back on the south four stance. Yeah, it's still long way where we're at eight now. Kinko is probably slightly ahead on points. I certainly have him ahead in this round. And therefore, two rounds ahead on the unofficial scorecard after eight rounds. He's just the one, he, just, he needs to throw more punches. Oh, yeah, that, that round was too boy. I mean, yeah. he hardly threw anything whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Dinkley's round based on the amount of action. He's a brilliant scientific boxer, Salani. But you've got to throw punches in this game. Taking him a bit of time to find the range. It's found that Pinky a little bit of time to get used to this uh, very awkward style of uh, Clon Guani. And for a tall man, he's doing a lot of work on the inside, which is troubling for Kingpin. But the longer the fight goes, the more Kingpin is starting just to uh, assert a little bit of dominance. Say in the corner of the Sunday King Cree. Kani Puzi is enjoying the fight. I'm not going to mention it yet on air because he's got a big fight coming up. But we'll talk about that in the near future. Kani Puzi, a brilliant fighter, fighting out of the Damien to run stable. Did well under Alan Tiawil. I was surprised when he left. Alan is a brilliant trainer, but obviously, same for Damien Duran. Two of these guys are good trainers. Round 9 of a general 12. This is for the South African Junior Lightweight Championship. Sapiso Kongwani in the gold trunks of Sander Ginkley in the black and white. And so far, on my official scorecard, I have Ginkley ahead by two. Yeah, Ginkley is slightly ahead, definitely. Well, he's bringing the fight to his opponent. To Kongwani, to Sapiso. He's come to fight. He's got to be scoring rounds. Yeah. And the game with Kinky coming onto the inside. We're not seeing anything coming back from Klonkwani at the moment. A lot of trouble for Klonkwani. Is this the time that we're seeing the conditioning that uh, he hasn't required over 10 rounds since 2018 to come into the mix? And you're in the title fight, here, Kevin. You've got to throw punches. You've got to impress the judges. You've got to go show that you want to be the champion for the judges to make you the champion. And that guy right there is Ginkwe. Yeah, I think Ginkwe is going to move from Bonnie around a little better as well. Yeah, he must have get a point taken away now and this is the Ginkwe. Because it will be silly because he's, he's winning this fight. Yeah, it's too close uh, to call for the point to be detected. Yeah, don't mess it up now. Don't be careless. We are in the Orlando Community Hall in Soweto on a Sunday afternoon on your World of Champions as Carver Boxing Promotions brings the action to the people of Soweto. Making South African Junior Lightweight Championship up for grabs here. And I'll tell you what, King Kree has turned this fight around. He turned yeah. it around in round eight and he's continuing this in round nine. It's all King Kree at the moment. Definitely. Round number nine, all that man in picture, Sander King Kree. Looking to win another South African title, he's the former South African featherweight champion. He's been there before as a champion. And he's looking good here in the ninth round. Sandra Ginkwe. Work rate is unbelievable. Brilliant. Wow. Round number nine. And he's throwing punches like this. Oh, one more. Great stuff. Well, well done, done to the conditioning of Sandra Ginkwe. Punches is just a little to flower once because there wasn't any really contact really made by Gungwani and he's and he's bouncing on his feet. It's a nice little stare for the left hand, but there's nothing really in it. Yeah, he, needs, he needs to stand and trade a little bit. Come on, come on. He's uh, Kevin. Oh, no, 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 no. He's not trading, he's just running. You're not gonna win rounds like that. But at the moment. Kulvani maybe needs to borrow the running shoes of Baldor, the Argentinian who lost against Gengreke in the pop in the previous fight. Yeah, absolutely. In my opinion, another 10 rounder in favor of Asanda Ginkri. Yeah, it's, it's, 
so difficult to, for Genpi to find any range because Fungwon uh, is all over him. And uh, he's trying to get himself out of the, 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 the long levers of the Visa Florida and land some quality punches. I still think, though, that Genpi is doing enough. Uh, protagonists have received warnings at the start of a round. Hitting on the back of the body from Ginkri, hitting behind the head from Kumbwani. Round 10 could be a compelling one for Asanda Ginkri and Sofiso Kumbwani. Ginkri in the black trunks, Kumbwani in the gold. I think uh, at this stage of the fight, uh, maybe he's uh, saving himself for the uh, next two rounds, the championship rounds. But at the moment, for me, if Asanda Ginko went on to the offensive, he could end this now. Now Ginko's looking good. Championship rounds, round number 10. Kevin is a, is a bridge away now, Kevin Larina, and uh, I think uh, Tony Fuzzi will be looking at that division soon because that division is starting to happen. What? To the starts of the championship rounds, round 11 of the schedule 12 for the South African Junior Lightweight title. And we know that uh, Sander Ginkli, in uh, four of his last five rounds, has gone uh, 11 or 12 rounds. 
Only seven out of eight in the last round because he won by technical knockout over Tsubizuzu Zinganke. But for Tsubizuzu Kongwani, this is new territory. Yeah, it's new territory. And uh, what does he need to do to win right now? He probably needs uh, a knockdown. He needs something special. Yeah, he does uh, need to throw more punches. He's got to go for broke. I mean, he's got to go for broke. He, he's got to realize he, he's definitely not ahead in this fight. He hasn't thrown enough punches. And he's, he's got to bomb that straight right now and look for the knockout. I don't, I don't have him with enough points to win the next two rounds and win the, and win the title. So um, for him, he's got to either, either have a point deducted from uh, Ginkley or, uh, or have a knockdown in the 10-8 round and then win the final round. Did you win this or, or by way of knockout? And that's a nice right hand, but is it enough for for, for Mangwani? Well, you know, they're saying boxing, you mustn't look for a knockout, it kind of falls by itself. But with two rounds to go, you've got to look for the knockout, without a doubt. He's got to take chances now. Inky continues to back away. It's been the theme right from the beginning of the fight, counter-punching. Inky has been offensive on the assertive. If you continue to ask how many punches are actually making the, uh, you know, making the scoring zone, finding the targets. Ginky continues on the front foot, counter-attacking, the left hand doesn't make any progress. Asanda Ginky looks assured of victory by his own making, because he's, there's a little bit of cockiness there from Asanda Ginky suddenly. One minute remaining in round 11 of a scheduled 12. Four minutes of boxing remaining. Before we find out who's going to be crowned the South African Junior Lightweight Championship. <laughs> 45 seconds remaining in round 11. Ginky still on the offensive for Guani, putting up a good show for a man who's only fought seven rounds in his last three fights. Going back to May 2022. That's just what happens in the gym as well, don't forget. We spoke about his conditioning. We were wondering whether he had the conditioning to go 12 rounds, but he's shown us that he has got the conditioning. He's trapped inside his own corner at the moment. Ten seconds remaining in round 11 of a scheduled 12. One of these two protagonists will be crowned as the South African Junior Lightweight Champion in just three minutes' time. Coming up on your World of Champions, Alexander Usyk against Daniel Dubois. IBF, IBO, WBO, and WBA Super Heavyweight Championships live on the 27th of August. That is in uh, one week's time, live on your World of Champions, the Super Heavyweight Championships. Daniel Dubois' last fight was against Kevin Arena. Got drawn two times in the opening rounds of that uh, encounter. Fighters greet each other. Oops. There's been a lot of uh, fairness about this fight and no niggle. Yeah, a couple of uh, punches behind the head maybe, but nothing worse than that. Three minutes away. Unless there's a knockout to decide who's going to be the South African Junior Lightweight Champion. Sapiso Kungwani in the goal. Asandan Dinku in the black colors. It's a tough fight. It's been a tough fight and suddenly Kungwani's fighting on the front foot. This is what he needed to do from about, about round five or six, you know. Stand toe to toe like that. Stand your ground. You don't have to run all the time. Look, look how much better he looks now standing his ground. Maybe that'll be the difference on the judges' scorecard by the end of it. Yes, it is about punches landed. But uh, as you said, trying some punches like an offensive fighter. You see much more offense from the piece of And at this stage of the fight, with fatigue, Coming to the fore, all it takes is one really bad right time punch. You know, if there's anything both fighters have done wrong, is that they've missed too many punches. But at, at the end of the day, uh, Ginko has got to, got to be leading. Well, no unofficial scorecard. Ginko certainly is the man who's to the fore at the moment. Rank number two in the uh, featherweight division. He's moved up to junior lightweight for the South African title fight. 
and whoever wins this one will be the champion and we'll have to see the rest of the contenders lining up to have a go at uh, Brian Mitchell's former title. Pongwani starts to back away again. It's been a regular thought in this fight so far. But take nothing away from Pongwani. He'll take a lot of credit for his guts in this encounter. There's no doubt about that. For me, Kinky's going to win by way of a points decision here, unless there's a knockout. But uh, Pongwani, I thought, has been fantastic. Yeah, he, he has been. Both, both fighters have, have been good. But, but he's got to turn it right hand over. He's got to stand toe to toe. You've got to have a go. If you want to win the title, you've got to stand and have a go. You can't be on the back foot all the time. You, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lifetime opportunity, here, Ken, and you've got to grab it, and you've got to get in the, in the center of the ring and fight. So even at this stage, and how close this fight was, would you recommend a rematch? Well, no, it depends. I suppose he, he's going to move on from this. Depends what the promoters want. But it's still a good fight. Yeah, it has been a good fight. Right to the body from uh, King King. He gets turned around, but he's chucked the glove off Kongwani. Don't turn your back on your opponent. It's not really a good idea. Someone who says the same thing. Like we said in earlier fights, Kevin, you, you, you go back, you watch this video at home, and you watch it as many times as you have to, and you learn from it. You go back to the gym and you look. He's a good fighter, Kongwani. He's a very good fighter. There is so much support for Sabiso Kongwani in the house. Lots of, uh, of his uh, troop coming down from uh, Chakuma and from Manubulele. But is he going to take the title back? into the Limpopo province or is Asanda Ginkli going to keep it in Mdansane there's the South African title belt and one of these two is a piece of Grumbwani or Asanda Ginkli will be wearing it uh, in just a little while's time some of the action then from the final round and it was a there was another bit of right in there from Grumbwani uh, not too much power in it and uh, strikes off the shoulder a nice little left hook on the inside from Ginkli as Kulakwani backs away as he had done through most of the 36 minutes. It was a nice little left hook on the inside from Kinkri. And uh, the tongue that gets stuck out by Isubiso Kulakwani. Nothing wrong with a bit of humor in the fight game every now and again. But it is a serious thing. Brian Mitchell will uh, go up to the ring and uh, have a chat to the winner once it's been declared by the judges, by the referee and by a ring announcer who is Duncan Pollock from Cape Town. It's been an interesting fight, and I must give a lot of credit here to Sofiso Kulungwani. He spoke about uh, his uh, 10 rounder victory over Prince and Klobu in uh, Toyondo in uh, December 2018, and since then, five six round fights where he uh, fought a total of about uh, 20 rounds out of 30. Judges will have the final say. The referee Tabo Spumpol is in the center of the ring. The judges appear to have been tabulated. And we'll go over to Duncan Pollock for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the scorecards. We have four title bouts on the card this evening. This is the second of those. And it was for the second South African junior lightweight title. Scheduled for 12 rounds, it went the distance. Ahead of me going to the scorecards, I'd just like to introduce you to two specific gentlemen on my right who are part of the presentation party. First of all, local ward councillor, councillor Bongani Tlamini, and then representing the Board of Boxing South Africa, Dr. Azwitamisi Ndangen. As I said, it went 12, which means we go to the scorecards. Let's give you those scores. Judge Yap for Nivenhazen scored the fight 115-113. Judge Cipriel Indaba also scored the fight 115-113. The third and 
telling score from Judge Mfundo Mvandava, 116114. All in favour of your winner, former South African featherweight champion, and now the new South African junior lightweight champion from Ndansani in the Eastern Cape of South Africa, your winner, Asanda! difference between the two fighters all the judges had it by two points to the new South African junior lightweight champion from Mdansani in East London or just outside of East London is Asanda Ginkri who wins his second national title after having won the South African featherweight title against uh, Abdulaziz Kunit in uh, September of 2021. Asanda Ginkri, wow what a fight, well done my friend.